Hey guys, my name's Sid. If you lived in my neighborhood when I was a kid, you might know me as the bad boy. The one who wore a skull t-shirt and the one with the ferocious killer dog. But all stories have two versions. Only no one ever wanted to hear mine. Actually, I was always a very good boy. Yes, I always fought with my sister, sometimes threw tantrums in the street, but what kid doesn't do that? My t-shirt was because I liked rock music, and my haircut was because my family didn't have money to send me to a hairdresser, so they cut it for me. People at school treated me very badly because of my appearance. It was like they were afraid of me. I tried to make friends many times, but everyone always stayed away from me. Luckily, I had one best friend who never judged me and was always by my side. My dog. My parents were hardly ever in the house, so Scud was the only one who kept me company every day. Anyway, he had a good time at my house. I always played with my toys. When I grew up, I wanted to be a doctor, so I used to do surgeries with my toys, fusing them and experimenting with them. I felt pity when I broke them. But once, my mom told me that they don't feel pain, so from that day on, I didn't mind breaking them, since that would be a good excuse to try to repair them. Despite my family's situation, everything was going very well, but one fateful day, everything would change. One day, I was with a new toy I had found. It was a Buzz Lightyear, just like the one on TV. I was ready to launch it into space where it belonged, but something incredible happened. The toys in my house came to life. They were everywhere. In the mud, in the sandbox. They were all getting up and walking towards me, like zombies. At that moment, Woody, another one of my new toys, stared at me with a terrified look on his face and told me that toys have lives and that if I ever hurt them again, they'll kill me. I never saw Buzz or Woody again, but from that day on, I am terrified of toys and they know it. From that day on, being in my house became a nightmare. Every time I went into my room, all my toys were arranged differently. I tried to throw them away, but they always came back. Sometimes they'd be waiting for me perfectly arranged with signs telling me to play with them. Crying, I obeyed them. Who knows what would happen to me if I didn't. Anyway, I didn't even pay attention to them. In any case, not even listening to them and everything they asked me to do would prevent what happened on the worst night, the night I was almost killed. That night, I had gone to bed very early, as we had an evaluation and I was fatigued. I fell asleep almost instantly, and although I thought I would wake up many hours later, a few minutes later, I was already with my eyes open. What? What's happening? They were my three toys. Babyface, Legs, and Ducky. The last one had a piece of paper cut in its hand, which had written on it, You are not playing with us anymore. I'm... I'm sorry. I promise I'll do it more often. Why do we always have to ask you? Please, don't hurt me. I'm really trying my best. You've been a very bad boy, Sid. Now, we'll have to hurt you. No, please, no, I'll do anything you ask. Don't do anything to me. Ignoring my words, Ducky grabbed one of my eyelids with its huge toy hands and lifted it up, to which Legs, who climbed up to my forehead, used its fishing rod to catch it and leave it open. Luckily for me, its hook was made of plastic, so it didn't hurt, but that wasn't its purpose. Other toys began to climb up on my belly with a small mirror, and at the command of Babyface's paws, they put it near my eye. I didn't understand what they were doing, but when I saw them carefully arrange it, I understood everything. Ah! Help! My eyes! It burns! After several seconds of screaming and pain, they did the same to the other eye. After a few seconds, they stopped. My eye felt like it was burning. I couldn't see anything at all. When they stopped, I felt something strange. While I was screaming, toy soldiers came into my mouth. I tried to close it, but Babyface used its claws to leave it open, while with its head, it mocked me. Already inside my mouth, a few soldiers ran towards my throat. I started, 
Were they trying to kill me? Had I hurt them so much that they hated me so much? I felt like fainting, but hearing all the screams. And to my rescue, my dog ran into my bed. And when it jumped on top of me to attack the toys as it always does, the bed gave up and broke, allowing me to break free. I coughed up all the soldiers and desperately ran out of my room, but I still couldn't see anything. I crashed into everything in front of me until, as soon as I managed to get out of the room, I fell down the stairs. Already on the floor, I felt that my body was not reacting. I couldn't feel my arms or my legs. Possibly I had broken them. I opened my eyes slowly, trying to clear my vision. Babyface was in my face, looking at me with that terrifying baby smile. I felt his paws sinking into my nostrils, squeezing harder and harder inside. I wanted to scream. I wanted to call for help, but I was so shocked. I could only watch with my eyes wide open. With no one to save me, assuming Babyface was going to bury its claws all the way into my brain, the toy simply stopped. We will kill your sister. We will kill your family. We will kill your dog. Play with us. With that said, the toy simply fell to the floor as if it had no life. Behind me, I heard two worried voices. Sid, what happened to you? Son, are you okay? It was my parents. Both of them had brought my sister from a friend's house. Damn it, son, look at your shoulder. You've dislocated it. Confused, I couldn't answer anything. I just looked at them, and crying, I hugged them. Wow, you really got hit hard, didn't you? When we went to the hospital, they only told me I had a dislocated arm and some bruises. When I got home, I went to my room. All the toys were leaning on the bed with a sign that said, We love you, Sid. It took me days to see well again, and I still don't think part of my eyes ever healed. From that day on, I played with my toys every day until the day I moved out of my house. All of my aspirations of becoming a doctor vanished. Today, I work as a garbage collector. I enjoy my job, but every once in a while, when I throw everything in the dumpster, sometimes I see toys in the garbage, and I swear they're looking at me too. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. Andy's best friend in the Toy Story movies is his cowboy doll Woody, but a theory posits that Woody first belonged to Andy's absent father. Being one of the most discussed conspiracy theories, many fans came up with various interpretations of this. Some say Woody himself was Andy's father, and somehow his dead father remained alive through his childhood doll, but Toy Story never directly addressed the big question. What exactly happened to Andy's father? Did he die? Did he and Andy's mom get a divorce? The story you're about to see is a spin-off sequel created by IMR, just for your entertainment. Being one of the biggest fans of the Toy Story franchise, IMR took the liberty to produce the comic storyline with a creative dark turn. Hope you all will enjoy it. Ah! Where the hell is my beer? I asked for it an hour ago! Get it yourself! Andy? Andy! Where is that stupid boy? Always keeping his toys scattered around the floor? Andy! I casually walked downstairs. This was something new for me. Since my mom married her abusive boyfriend, our lives had finally become completely unbearable. Frank's abuses have two levels. At first, he abuses alcohol, and then he abuses us. Pretty simple, but highly effective. As I came downstairs, I saw my mom staring at me with utmost annoyance and anger. How many times do I have to tell you to throw out this old junk? One day, it's gonna ruin our lives. She has always been so dramatic about everything. I kept quiet like I do these days and started picking up my toys into a cardboard box. Frank stormed to the fridge to get himself a beer while my mom went to the kitchen cursing her life. On his way back to the porch, Frank stopped beside me. 
I was about to pick up the last toy, and he happily put his huge feet on my hand. <laughs> Look at you, filthy, measurable squint. It was painful, but I kept quiet like I do these days. After a few seconds, he let go and went back to his dirty, fart-smelling couch, back to watching TV. I grabbed the box filled with toys and came back to my room. I opened my closet to keep the toys. I was almost done putting all of them when I found a Sheriff Cowboy toy. I had no idea how it ended up in my box, so I picked it up and pulled the string attached to its back. Giddy up, partner! Wow, it talks! I pulled the string a few more times and it said a bunch of catchphrases like, Reach for the sky! You're my favorite deputy! The toy's clothes were old and had dirt on them. I took it to the bathroom and cleaned its shirt. I slept hugging it that night. For the first time in a while, I missed my dad. I hardly think about him. He died when I was a little kid. Tears rolled down my eyes as I thought about him. I looked at the cowboy doll. I wish you could come alive. It was probably around 1 a.m. when I woke up hearing my mom's painful sobbing. No, Frank, please. Just leave me, okay? I don't want to be with you anymore. I realized drunk Frank is again beating my mom. I came downstairs and found my mom on the ground. Her lips were bleeding, probably from a punch or a slap, and Frank was standing next to her with his leather belt in one hand. Leave you? After how you ruined my life? You said your husband left tons of money for us! That's why I came here! And now you tell me all that money belongs to your little piglet son? You witch! I'll- Don't you dare touch my mom, Frank! My, my. The little piglet talked! <laughs> now I will skin both of you alive! Saying this, he snapped the belt in my direction. And just then, an unexpected sound took place. There's a snake in my boot! What the hell is this? I don't know how my cowboy doll ended up on the living room floor. Frank's accidental stepping over him made it talk. Ah, what a hecked up family is this! He raised his leg to stomp on my doll in anger. I lunged at him, screaming. No! Leave him alone! But he pushed me away and I fell on the floor. Frank then went on stomping over the doll and screaming in joy. <laughs> there goes your ragged puppet! I'll do the same thing to you too! The doll was getting smashed, but then suddenly Frank stopped. He grabbed his chest and fell on the floor like he was having a heart attack. No! Frank! My mom screamed. Frank's body started shaking and his skin swelled up. Thousands of blisters started popping on his face, arms, every inch of his body. He looked like a man built with transparent water balloons. Slowly, he blew up into a big barrage balloon. In a choked up dying voice, he said, What's happening to me? And then a loud sound of pop took place. Frank popped and his skin fell on the floor along with his clothes. My mom and I were too stunned to speak. What did you do to him, Andy? What? I didn't do anything. What are you saying? Where did you find this doll? I remember burning it with the other stuff. What other stuff? What are you saying? This can't be. This isn't possible. He's dead. I saw my mom turning hysteric. I was shocked to see that the doll's appearance scared her more than what just happened to Frank. Her words made no sense. I couldn't take it anymore. I screamed. Please tell me what's going on here! You're being crazy! It belonged to your dad, okay? Happy? I couldn't bear the sight of his things. They all reminded me of your father, Andy. So I burned them. I burnt everything that belonged to your dad. And I burned Woody too. Then how the hell is he back? Dad called him Woody? I will burn this again. Yes, right now. But before she could, Frank's leftovers started moving. Something was under all that skin and clothes. 
The pile started to rise like a wave on the ocean. Slowly, a skinny pair of legs wearing boots peeked out from that pile. One by one, the hands, the upper torso, and a face with a sheriff hat on it hovered from that pile. My small cowboy doll, Woody, was now standing in front of our eyes in his human size. A sick smile was lurking on his face. He looked my mom in the eye and said, Being there for a child is the most noble thing a toy can do. Oh my god, this isn't real. <laughs> This is the perfect time to panic. And he picked up Frank's belt and started chasing my mom around the house. Time to straighten things up. Ah! My mom ran to save her life and Woody didn't let her breathe for one second. There came a point when she collapsed on the ground and started panting. And the final truth came out of her mouth. I'm sorry, okay? I, I admit it. I killed him. <sighs> Yes, it was me. I poisoned him every single day for his money. But please, please let me go. You killed my dad? You killed that one person who loved me? Fury and heartbreak took over me. I looked at Woody. He had the biggest grin ever. He slowly walked up to my mom and then gave her a tight hug. He hugged her so tight that my mom's face smashed like a jelly bean. But instead of blood or fluid, cotton balls came out of her mouth. Strings of thread rolled down from her eyes. And then, an explosion of puffy cotton balls took place, leaving her skin and clothes on the ground. Like Frank, she was gone too. I finally have peace in my life now. Woody and his new girlfriend take good care of me. We call her Bo Peep. Both of them look odd in their human-sized physic, but I don't ever want to be away from them. It's like having my perfect parents again. Over the years, the Toy Story franchise has been subject to all manner of fan theories. From how the toys are living creatures, to Andy's mother being the real villain. A reoccurring theme throughout the Toy Story movies is the toy's fear of not being loved or played with. Based on that note, some fans even claim that the toys from Toy Story are vampires, and they are immortal. To succumb to their immortal life, the toys feed on children's joy instead of blood. And maybe because Andy's mother could sense this evil intention among the toys, she was so adamant to get rid of them. However, these are just theories developed by fans. IMR Scary Tales thought to go creative by giving this theory a dark yet entertaining touch. Enjoy. My daughter Chrissy used to be a huge fan of Toy Story when she was five years old. She was obsessed with the weird mutant toys, and among them, the baby face was her favorite. As creepy as it sounds, it was true. Kids sometimes fancy weird things that make no sense to grown-ups. She would beg me to buy her the baby face toy, but I didn't because of its scary attire. One day, I was cleaning the house when I heard my husband talking to Chrissy in a hush-hush voice. Now, don't tell mom, okay? She would be angry if she knew I made this for you. I love you, Dad. This is exactly what I wanted. I went to Chrissy's room and saw my husband, Daniel, giving a box to Chrissy. What are you guys up to? What's in that box, Daniel? Um, nothing. Chrissy came running up to me and said, Dad made me the baby face toy. Please, Mommy, can I keep it? Please. I opened the box and saw my nightmare turned into reality. Daniel is an engineer, and somehow he has built the creepy baby face toy from Toy Story for our daughter. He let out an awkward chuckle and said, <laughs> Chrissy's been asking for it for a long time, Mindy. It's just a toy after all. But how come this doesn't freak out you guys? I don't think any kid should play with something like this. But mommy, it walks. Chrissy placed the toy on the floor and turned on a small switch at the back of his bulbous head. Balancing on its metallic spider legs, the head of another broken doll started walking all over Chrissy's room. God, this looks sick. Come on, Mindy, you're overreacting now. What harm can come from playing with a toy? Fine, you can keep it. Oh, my sweet mommy. 
Chrissy hugged me and got super excited about finally having the toy of her dreams. The entire day, Chrissy didn't let Babyface go out of her sight. Even at the dinner table, I had to tolerate that creepy doll staring at me. After dinner, I got busy doing the dishes and cleaning the kitchen. The house was in deep silence as everyone slept in their rooms. Before going to bed, I thought of checking on my daughter. I walked into her room, trying my best not to wake her up. Chrissy was sleeping like a little lamb, and beside her laid Babyface. With one broken eye and its outrageous metallic legs, this was my chance. I picked it up to throw it in the bin, and to my surprise, Chrissy opened her eyes. What are you doing with Babyface? Um, nothing, just keeping it on the shelf. You lie! You were gonna throw him away! No, why would you think that, Chrissy? He just told me. He heard your heart. A cold shiver ran down my spine. Just then, I felt a sharp pain on my finger like a giant bee stung me, and I dropped the toy on the floor. You've made him angry. Now, he is going to punish you, mummy. What? What are you... Suddenly, a sound of crackling bone shifted my attention from Chrissy to Babyface. The toy was now standing on its spidey legs and looking at me with a creepy smile. I could see the evil in its eye. Within a second, it started to crawl at me at full speed. It jumped on me, and I screamed and kicked it with all of my strength. The toy flew in the air for a moment and hit the wall. Its creepy metal legs broke like shattered glass, and I sat down on the floor. I was panting. I thought, finally it was over. The damned cursed toy is dead now. But my relief didn't last long. As soon as the toy broke, something horrible happened. Thousands of small baby-faced toys started coming out of its big, bulbous head. Yes, an army of baby faces filled Chrissy's room. <laughs> get mommy, go, get her! Chrissy started clapping and laughing, seeing these monsters attack me. Before I could get up and run, they were all over my body like a herd of spiders. They were crawling everywhere. On my hands, my legs, my hair, my face, even got inside my clothes. Their tiny metal legs pierced through my skin. I was getting injected with a thousand needles at the same time. Ah, save me! Save me! Daniel! Help me! Ah! No matter how hard I tried to get the creepy crawlers away from me, more and more of them started coming at me. I thought this was it. I will be eaten alive by these baby faces. Somehow, somehow they all came alive and sensed my hatred for them. Oh God, if I knew how vengeful and dangerous they are, I would have never pissed them off. I would have loved them and feared them just like Chrissy. Please, if I could only have one more chance. I swear, I will be their mother too. But I guess it's too late now. I was drowning in a swarm of baby faces. They were laughing like baby vampires. The cuts they made on my body. I could feel them sucking my blood from those wounds. As they drank my blood, their heads turned red. I was in hell, and no one came to my rescue. Slowly, the will to live started dying in my heart. <laughs> this is what you deserve, Mommy. This is what happens when you hate Babyface. Chrissy mocked me sitting on her bed. I couldn't believe my daughter was against me. Slowly, her face started changing into the creepy toy. My beautiful daughter's head got replaced by the one-eyed broken doll head. I couldn't take it anymore. Not my daughter! I shook my body with all my strength, and the crawling toys deflected. Once I freed myself from their grasp, I lunged at Chrissy, who wasn't my daughter anymore. I grabbed the bulbous head and started smashing it into the wall. You took my daughter! I will kill you! I will kill you! You cursed doll! This will be the end of you! Die! 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 
I went on smashing the doll's head on the wall. I didn't stop, didn't hesitate, just kept screaming. Die, die, die! Mindy, what did you do? It was Daniel's voice that brought me back to this world. I wanted to tell him, I killed Babyface. We finally got rid of this haunted toy, but then I noticed my hands. To my horror, they were drenched in blood, human blood. As I looked at my daughter's bed, the ground beneath my feet swept away. All hell broke loose. It wasn't a baby face whom I thought I was smashing into the wall. The wall had blood stains, and fresh blood was dripping down it. Chrissy's lifeless little head hung from the edge of the bed, and I realized what the toy made me do. It made me kill my daughter. There were no swarms of small baby faces, as if there never were. Only the baby face toy that my husband made for Chrissy was lying broken in the corner. Oh my god, is that her? Yeah, Mindy William, the mother who smashed her daughter's head to a pulp. Some people say she got possessed by a demon. That's She's a psycho. She did it with her sane mind. There's no demon behind this crime.